Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm Darren McBreen. It is Thursday, September 24th, 2015. Here's a quick look. What's coming up? Tonight on the InfoWars Nightly News, the mainstream media launches Operation Pope Kid. A five-year-old slips through a multi-million dollar security theater apparatus to hand the Pope a pro-illegal immigration t-shirt and letter. Darren McBreen will look at this and past attempts by the mainstream media propaganda machine to use psyops on the public. They took the babies out of the incubators. Took the incubators and left the children to die on the cold floor. Then, Darren McBreen interviews Matthew Stein, author of When Disaster Strikes and When Technology Fails, who will discuss key preparedness strategies for a host of crises that could harm you and your family. And so it is one of the least understood threats and yet the greatest threat that we face. All that and more on tonight's InfoWars Nightly News. is back. If you want a product that has 10 known ingredients that naturally get your body to relax, your brain to relax, so you get deep restful sleep, knockouts it, InfoWarsLife.com. You take one or two of these and it just is really clean restful sleep is what the reviews are. It's what I've experienced and it just synergistically puts everything in there. Visit InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. Her name is Sophia Cruz, and her story has quickly become a national sensation. How this sweet little five-year-old girl with pigtails managed to deliver a pro-immigrant message to the Pope. And this was on behalf of millions of undocumented migrants here in the United States. And the, you know, the crowd cheered with excitement as this little girl managed to climb over a metal barrier and deliver her message to the Pope who was being paraded through the streets of Washington, D.C. at the time in his open-sided Pope mobile. Now, once she broke through those barriers, it was really weird. I mean, she was escorted by the police, then through the Secret Service, and then lifted up by, you know, one of the Pope's security personnel as she handed him a letter pleading for the Pope to let her parents stay in the country, and she also gave him a pro-immigration T-shirt. Wow. And, of course, the cameras were all there to record the event. The mainstream media is absolutely having a field day with this. It is by far the number one story and the number one talked about event in America right now. Everyone is talking about poor little Sophia. Well, Alex, I was going to say that that excellent report that Rob Dew had about the young child who we're told climbed through the metal barriers, got through all the barricades, presented this, in, this letter to the Pope that was incredibly precocious. This child is a genius and a master escape artist. Uh, but listen, at the core of this, Alex, we need to read what this group is doing that, that uh, put her up to this and got her through. You know, she didn't just show up there like we're told all the kids are coming across thousands of miles of Central and South America, presenting themselves at the border, and Glenn Beck meets them there with uh, teddy bears. This child had a, a letter about DAPA, Deferred Action for Parents. Understand that when you have the mainstream media like Fox and CNN pushing back and saying to Donald Trump, there's no such thing as anchor babies. And besides, if there were, it's in the Constitution. That's a total lie. They're talking about deferred action for children. And of course, they define children as people up to the age of 31. But this is deferred action for parents. This child uh, that was there yesterday gave him the letter. She is, uh, was born in America, so they say, well, she's an American citizen. She's an anchor, baby. Please yeah. don't send my parents away. Don't send her parents And, and look, I'm going to say it. What do people that prey on children use? They use ice cream trucks. They use candy trucks. They use other children. They use puppies. The globalists are using this little girl, in my view, 
uh, as an allegory, just like predators would use another child to get the kids in the truck. And the American people are very childlike, and they're going, look, a child, a child, we're nice, work with us. That's right, and this was no doubt a staged event, in my opinion, to promote illegal immigration and its amnesty for all. Am I right? We're now joined by Kit Daniels, yep. Infor's reporter. What do you think? Was this staged? Absolutely. It was completely, totally, 100% staged. I mean, to put it in the context, we got a pope here who's a practically a Trojan horse. I mean, he's going around talking about politics. He's basically saying the same Obama rhetoric that we hear from Obama every day, and yet... People are saying, oh, no, it's the Pope. You know, he's not being political. It's, you know, we can listen to him, you know. They're saying the same thing, just different accents. Yeah, laugh, <laughs> literally. And it's like the Pope is, can do more damage than Obama can because he doesn't have this uh, stigma of being a politician. Sure. And also, even beyond that, it's kind of like a judo move that the establishment's pulling on us because they can take this Pope, who's a global leader of a Christian church, mm -hmm and say, oh, well, why is the right wing? Why don't they listen to the Pope? He's one of them, you know? So he's a Christian too, so why doesn't, why are they still, you know, talking bad about global warming and saying this false and this and that when their own Pope is saying otherwise? So they're basically putting a Christian face to, to push the globalist yeah. agenda. It's literally this. Marxism with a thin veneer of Christianity. Gotcha. That's basically Pope Marx, uh, I said Pope Marx. Now, I thought it was interesting reading your article today to find out that, that this little girl and her parents were both, they were all flown in specifically for this purpose, right? <laughs> and she was obviously coached into doing this. We know her parents are big time activists and they want an open door policy that will prevent the deportation of anchor baby's parents. So, I mean, I thought that was very interesting. I mean, do you think, obviously this girl was coached from the very beginning. Yeah, I mean, when I was five years old, I was playing with matchboxes, Hot Wheels, you know, I had the You, you weren't too political yeah, exactly. back then? Yeah. And yet this little girl is like, I can understand if she's going to the Pope saying, can you save my daddy? I don't want to leave him, you know? But this girl went and took the Pope and took him like a handwritten note that said something about the, the DAPA Act, I think, the Deferred Action for sure. Parents yeah. in America, or something of that effect. And it's like this girl's talking about high level legislation that I had to look up as a journalist to know what it was. <laughs> so you're telling me this little girl is like, went on her, her own accord? Because this is what the mainstream media is trying to tell us. This is the official story they're trying to tell us. That this little girl went on her own accord to the Pope, got through a barricade with a shirt that, I, I don't know, did she make the shirt herself? I mean, what's the official story on that? Did she silk screen the shirt? <laughs> So, and then she took him a handwritten note saying, hey, you know, I want amnesty for everybody in America. Well, in the with. mainstream media, they've got a copy of the note. It's been all over the television. I told you, I was in the break room earlier today. You cannot get away from the story mm -hmm. right now. It's on every single channel. It's all over the internet. Yeah. And earlier today, very interesting folks, uh, Leo Zagami, he is a Vatican insider and he was on the Alex Jones show he said that he recognized the guy, the, the Pope's security mm -hmm. guy that picked up the girl and, and to, to, so the girl could hand the Pope the letter. Check it out. Regarding the little girl that you were talking about, uh, you know that guy who picks her up, the bald guy with the glasses who actually brings her to the Pope, you see her on the image, he's a very important guy. He is uh, General Domenico Gianni, uh, he is not wearing his, of course, his uh, inspector general uh, kind of divisa he has when he's in the Vatican, when he's uh, in America with the Pope. But he's a very high level member of the Knights of Malta, and he takes care of the Pope's security. Also, it's complete rubbish that the Pope doesn't see TV and he makes this kind of monastic life for himself publicly, because I know from friends of Domenico Gianni that the Pope regularly watches TV and uh, he's like any other guy. They just want to make out of him a saint. What's interesting to me about this bald-headed security guy that's for the Pope and his involvement in this whole thing is like, he's like the gatekeeper. You know, he's like if, let's say you had a medieval city with the, you know, some uh, army was sieging. He's kind of like the guy that opens the gate for the army, I mean, like this little girl, which literally is almost like an army because it's like all these illegals coming in. So it's like he's kind of like letting her come to the Pope. Mm -hmm. And that's a very good indication that this whole event was staged. Well, and I would say if it was just him, 
you know, maybe not. I mean, obviously they're yeah, not going to tase the little girl, but I mean, it, she got through the barrier. She was escorted by the police. She went through the secret service. She was escorted all the way up to the yeah, Pope himself. Like, if you put it together in a whole tapestry, that's when you come up with this whole version of the events that's completely contradictory to what the mainstream media is telling us. And then when the mainstream media is covering it across the board, that's a good indication that this is mm -hmm. a staged event. Absolutely. Well, speaking of staged events, there's a lot of misleading and false news stories coming out of the Obama White House late, lately. Tell us what the news media is not telling us about the clock kid. Well, you have this 14-year-old kid, uh, Ahmed Muhammad, I believe his name is. He went to high school in Irving, Texas, and he supposedly built this clock, right, to take the class to show off his engineering teacher, which he did. The engineering teacher told him that, hey, you know, uh, this is cool, but, you know, don't sh take it around class to your other classes and show it because people might get scared by it. I mean, it looked like a bomb, literally. And, but he didn't, he didn't follow his teacher's advice. He took the, the clock to English class, set it down next to him, and it had a wire sticking out of it. And then it just happens to go off in class. And then the English teacher notices it and calls the cops. Now, here's what's interesting to me about this whole story was that in one interview, Muhammad said that he took the clock to school to impress his engineering teacher. Then he went to, I think it was the Huffington Post, where he said that, well, I, sh I showed it to my teacher, but it scared her, so she called the cops on me. But wait a sec, that was two different stories there. He's saying that he took the clock to his English teacher to impress her. But in another interview, he said he took it to his engineering teacher. So right there, there's this big hole in the story. Well, and then and speaking of a story, it immediately became a story. This was another yeah. national news media sensation. How long after this happened did, I, I know Obama, it was not long after that that Obama invited yeah, like him to the White about, House. I don't even think it was 24 hours. Yeah. And it's just, just from that, it's like, man, I don't know. It's like just this whole, we're completely being gamed every single day. That's right. We are being played, and, and this has been going on for a long time. This, this goes back to when the CIA, when they first recruited the Nazi propagandists back in Operation Paperclip. This was right after World War II. And then, yeah, and then was, too. And I was just going to say Operation Mockingbird was after that. And they literally, ladies and gentlemen, they infiltrated hundreds of CIA agents who were, were infiltrating the mainstream media at the time. End of World War II, Operation Paperclip was launched by the Office of Strategic Services, the OSS, to smuggle known Nazi war criminals into the United States for recruitment into U.S. intelligence agencies. The Nazis were cleared to work in America after having their backgrounds bleached by the military. False employment histories were provided, and their previous Nazi affiliations were completely removed from the record. The OSS provided a model for the Central Intelligence Agency that was established in September 1947. The CIA specialized in propaganda, economic warfare, sabotage, and demolition. By the early 1950s, they controlled over 25 newspapers and wire agencies and had 3,000 plus employees engaged in propaganda. Journalists willing to promote the views of the CIA included members of the New York Times, Time Magazine, Newsweek, The Washington Post, and CBS Television. All right, so that was back then. The CIA obviously infiltrated the mainstream media. You were just talking about that was Operation Mockingbird. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like it hasn't stopped since, and we know it's just escalated since then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what's really interesting is, I think it was William Casey, the CIA director under Reagan, I believe. Mm -hmm. It was Jim Mars that told us once that he, when Jim Mars was working for the Fort Worth Star-Telegram, the newspaper up in Fort Worth, he got this uh, employee newsletter that said, oh, we're proud to announce that William Casey's now the head of CIA. And William Casey owned like, I think 20 or 30 newspapers at the time. Sure. So this is like, we heard about mm -hmm. Op Operation Mockingbird being in the 50s and 60s. And they supposedly, you know, wind it down. But, you know, then we hear in the 80s and possibly even the 90s, even today, you still got the CIA involvement. And when you got this whole network of kind of politicians that are married to journalists and this kind of this Washington insider elitism where not so much elitism, but it's just this whole network of people who know each other that, you know, you're obviously you're going to do you're going to say nice things about your buddy in office when you're running a newspaper. Well, not only that, they're going to push the agenda. Yeah. Right. And, and you can even go back to the Gulf War, 1991. Who could ever forget?